What's up guys, Sean the Bro here, and today we're gonna be going over modifying hurt box size and location. So essentially, we're gonna modify the hurt box that's attached to our character to better match what we're doing. So specifically, I should be able to crouch and my hurt box should go down. I should be able to knock my opponent down and their hurt box should disappear. Or not disappear, but just become very low. Or if you don't want them to be able to hit by the ground, then yes, it can disappear. But you see my point here. There should be options for me to adjust this so that my state actually changes with where I'm at. Now, I will say that um, my camera is a little bit farther down, and I'll show you why later in the series, or later in this episode, Ian. But... Uh, We'll go ahead and be fixing that, or at least removing some elements in the foreground. That way, they're not in view of the camera. So don't worry, I'm aware that that change happened. It was an adjustment that I made with the characters themselves that uh, kind of caused this to occur. So if you're seeing that after today's episode, we'll be talking about why and what to do to fix it. But there you go. So we're going to be able to modify our hurt boxes today. This ability to change the hurt box location and size will then allow us to have multiple hurt boxes if you'd like. That way you can determine some things like overheads and where the attack hit, like high, mid, low, things like that. All we really need today, I'm going to do this in my animation blueprint, the actual, I'm going to call the logic to change the hurt box, and then I'm going to... Uh, change the hurt box size based off of some data in the mutant character BP. So my base character BP, my base anim BP. That's pretty much all I need. I'm going to do some stuff with the camera just because we can make it look nicer. But it'll be very, very minor stuff that we do. No worries. And lastly, I want to show you something in code. We're not going to be changing anything in code today, but you could change it in code today. So all we're really going to be doing is changing the capsule collider size and the hurt box size. We do have to change both because the capsule component is the one that has the collision on it. So if you leave it huge, let's play it again real quick, real quick. Okay, so see, I've made capsule colliders visible, and I'll show you how to do this in a second. And when I shrink or when I crouch, you can see it shrinks down. You can see it actually, it looks like it disappears. It's not really disappearing, I'm just shrinking it down. Now, if the enemy was to jump on me, he would actually be able to land right on my head and bounce off me. This is good, because if we don't shrink the capsule collider, he would still be jumping and bouncing off of me around this height, even when I was crouched down. So this is important that we change both the capsule height and the hurt box height. They're important for different reasons. So just for the record, um, if you wanted to do it in code, you can simply grab your capsule component and set the capsule half height in here, the radius in here, or just when you initialize it, make it smaller depending on you know if you need it to just be a smaller value in general, because mine was a little bit too big. So I've already stated it, but what we essentially need to do is update our capsule collider and our hurt box. Now those are both stored in our character BP. So go to your base character BP, or you can go to a specific child BP if you have a specific class that you need to update this for. First things first, go to your capsule collider, or your capsule component. All right, now the capsule half height, as you saw the finding code just a few seconds ago, was 92 or 96 by default, I believe it's 96, I made it 80. Simply because the capsule collider was a little bit too big for the mutant, actually. When I was playing animations on it, it was way taller than the mutant, and it just didn't make sense because then the bouncing, um, and of course the, the enemies really aren't gonna be able to bounce off your head, but it's still important for collision because the, if they're jumping over your head, you need to make sure that they can do that, you know, and it looks correct. Like, you don't want to block them because the capsule collider is above the character and, and their mesh is not where it needs to be. That's the first thing. The second thing we need to do is make this visible for you so you can see it. 
if you scroll down to rendering, it's visible and hidden in game. Leave visible checked, but then uncheck hidden in game. That way it becomes visible when you're playing. You can actually see it. Then next, I went ahead and moved my mesh more to the middle. Um, the mutant was kind of right. He had his feet kind of below it. That way his head was at the top of this. But this is his T-pose. When he's actually playing animations, most of the time he's not all the way at the, the top here, you know, depending on his animation. So I went ahead and moved the mutant, or my character, a little bit more to the middle. That way he's got parts sticking out below and above. Those changes are minor, but they are very important. And now what we need to do is have two functions. I've made them modify hurtbox and reset hurtbox. You just add a function by clicking this button and create two of them. If you have not watched the series up to this point, I believe we're on episode 58. Starting now, we're gonna be using things that we covered in other episodes, such as attaching our hurtbox to our character. If you just wanna see that episode and don't wanna catch up on the whole series, that's fine. I'll link that in an iCard right here. But if you're genuinely interested in what we have to show, then feel free to check out the entire series. I'll leave a link to the very first episode here, and you can get caught up. Now, we already covered this stuff with the Hurt Box, where we're spawning the actor, we're setting the BP reference, and I also happen to set a code reference. It's definitely not necessary to do both of these. I went over why I did this, though why I set it up this way uh, just because it was easier for me and then we attach it to our actor now we've already done this as I said but what we didn't do is we didn't make our hurt box visible we did kind of cover it or, or how to do it but just just the refresher and actually showing it in action here we want the hurt box BP reference which is the actor that we ended up spawning at on begin play of our character we want to grab the hitbox display, because if we go to our hurtbox, the hurtbox actually has a static mesh on it, which I've called hitbox display. And it's invisible right now by default. But it just looks like this. Here's my scaling, by the way. If you're trying to match mine exactly, you don't have to. But you can take a look at that and see what that looks like. So we're grabbing our static mesh and then we're setting visibility off of it and new visibility is true, meaning it is visible. There you go. Now we'll be able to see our capsule component and our hurt box, which we kind of need to see both if we're trying to implement this correctly. Now in our two functions, I've got modify hurt box and reset hurt box. They're not very complicated functions. All they have is a scale, and I do include an offset just in case we want to use an offset down the line. We don't really need it here, but I'll show you where it can be useful, and there's definitely times where uh, you're probably gonna want at least a little bit of an offset. You don't wanna abuse this because it can make it a little bit jumpy if you do, but it's perfectly fine if you're not doing it for too complex of animations. If you're doing too complex of animations, I'd highly recommend you use the same hurt box that's attached to the actor just kind of scale it. If we have multiple hurt boxes, which we're gonna add down the line, then it should be fine too, because you can just leave your overall one and add additional ones or disable and enable other ones. So modify hurt box. This is what's going to allow us to change our hurt box size and location. We need a width, a height, and an offset. We don't need a depth because there's no reason to go into the background or foreground here. If you do need that and you're doing more of a 3D game, then of course, feel free to add it. But just go ahead and add three new parameters, width, height, and offset. Float, float, vector. And all we need to do is grab our Hurtbox BP reference and then perform the correct logic. So if we grab the Hurtbox BP reference, then all we need to do is set its scale and its offset. Drag off of it. Set actor scale 3D. And then I leave the 
3D scale as one. This is important. It should start at zero, I believe. Make sure you make it one. We're not trying to eliminate the X value. We just don't want to change it. And then we want to use the passed in width for the Y and passed in height for the Z. After that, I've gone ahead and made a vector variable, so plus variable, and then choose the type, choose vector, and I've called it hurt box offset. Now this is specifically if we have one hurt box, so you know this may need to become an array, or we may need to put this on the actual hurt box itself, depending on if we're how how we want to do it. But for now, this is okay since we only have one; it won't really hurt anything. You'll see how it'll change later. And then our offset is a vector that comes in. So we just set the hurt box offset, and then we go ahead and add actor local offset. To clean this up, you could probably do it just like this. That looks a little bit better. You could definitely do it like that. It probably looks a little bit better. Set hurt box offset, drag off of hurt box BP reference, call add actor local offset. So add actor local offset basically changes where this location is in relation to where it was based on the amount you give it. So instead of like setting a world position to some forced location, we're just updating it, you know, offsetting it a bit. The reason I'm storing this hurt box offset is so we can actually reset. Sure, you can go ahead and just reset the location entirely and that would actually work fine. But there's also another way to do it and I feel like it's perfectly valid. It will depend on your use case. But say we're in reset hurt box. In reset hurt box, we grab our hurt box BP reference and we reset our actor scale 3D back to all ones. We want everything to be the size that it was initially. We don't want to try and adjust anything to fit that doesn't fit. And we don't want to try and force it back to the default values other than just setting the scale 1. 1 1.0, that's it. We don't need to do anything else with it. I also take my hurt box offset, I multiply it by integer negative one. So if you grab your hurt box offset and do the asterisk, which is multiply, or you can type in multiply, then you can multiply it by an integer, which multiplies the entire vector by this value. Remember a vector is three values long. It's an X, Y, and a Z. So if you multiply a vector by an integer, such as negative one, say you had one, zero, and one, you'd have negative one, zero, and negative one after this multiplication went through. So we're multiplying it by that to get the exact opposite of what we had and then adding that local offset, which essentially just reverts the initial offset that we put. Again, kind of a weird way to do it instead of just forcing it to be back at the start. I do have a reason for that, which will make a lot more sense in the next hurt box episode where we have multiple hurt boxes. However, I believe it's gonna be changed a little bit uh, at that point to kind of actually go off of the hurt box itself since we'll probably have multiple of this actor So you'll see that then but for now this should do the trick without issue We're not really gonna have to change much with it. Just maybe where it lives and and it'll make more sense There shouldn't be anything else you have to do down here So in that case we are done with the character BP so we need to go into the anim BP and check out a few things. All right. Now I have a th I have three new anim notifies, which is resize the crouching hurt box, resize the default hurt box, and resize the knockdown hurt box. For all of the states that you need, if we're using one specific hurt box and we want to resize it, then this is how we're going to have to handle it. We're going to have to resize it at all these different locations. If you have different hurt boxes. Uh, my friend in the Discord, Chris, was telling me how Killer Instinct does it with their different hitboxes, their different hurt boxes, and kind of where they're positioned, how many are in each state, like if you're jumping, crouching, all this stuff. You don't necessarily need this for all of them. You can enable and disable ones based on your state, and that will do the trick. However, if you're doing one hurt box, or you just need to adjust your one hurt box based off of an attack or your movement, then this method becomes completely correct. This will do everything we need it to do. If I go ahead and click on my crouch state, I have these animation state events. You can do this on transition as well. 
I specifically am doing it from the crouch state because of the fact that I don't have these really, sh really quick like one frame animation transitions. Because they're kind of longer, like I have 20 frames and things, normally this would be like, again, you know, one to eight frames depending on how complex it is and, you know, the character, maybe his speed's a little bit different. But I don't have that at those low, low frame amounts right now. The So I don't want to necessarily change the hurt box before the character is in the position, which is why I've decided to do it here. Feel free to do it wherever you're comfortable and wherever it ends up looking good based on your animation speed and when you call the function and or event to modify the hurt box. When I click on my state, I've added two for entered state and left state, resize the crouching hurt box and resize to default hurt box. I can also go ahead and reuse these events if I'd like. You can see how I'm gonna use it in the NMBP, but you can feel free to just copy these and place these wherever you need to, especially the resize the default. And then lastly, I have one for knockdown as well. The knockdown one is actually going to be on the animation because of the fact that uh, this one was a little bit more complex for me as well. Since I didn't have, I didn't modify it for jumping or being launched. So I actually updated the hurt box when the character got on the ground. Now, that means this whole time he can still get hit by a hurt box above his head, which means I should probably move this back a little bit. I don't want it to be too far down, so I don't want to completely invalidate it. But probably right around here at this point, I said, okay, they should not really be able to be hit anymore. So I can go ahead and move it to there. All right, I will save this and I'll exit out of this. And that's where my three anim notifies come from that I'm using here in the event graph. Their logic is pretty simple for all of them. The only thing that's gonna be a little confusing is why I'm calling crouch and uncrouch here. You're like, what What are these functions? These crouch and uncrouch, and these are code functions? Sort of. They're actually Unreal characters crouch and uncrouch function. The default ones that come with the character that we did not write. I'll show you why I'm doing that when we get there, but it is, that is what I'm doing. The rest of it should be pretty self-explanatory. Let's start with the top one, resize the crouching hurt box. All we gotta do here is this is saying we are crouching. So if we're crouching, then we wanna resize our hurt box, resize our capsule collider, and be good to go. That's it's as simple as that. If we have our mutant character reference, you could cast it to a mutant character BP. I went ahead and changed all my mutant character references from the code class to the mutant character BP reference. So whatever character you have, like if you're using a base character here, base character BP should be the one you're using now. Or continue to do cast, it's up to you. The cast doesn't actually hurt as much as you would think, and using a reference to a code class as opposed to the blueprint class is actually, it doesn't take as much data that it has to transfer around with it. So it's perfectly fine if you want to leave it the other way. I wasn't trying to keep it that way then switch it after all this time, but I just feel like we're using it more and more, and as it gets more complex, we don't want to continue to cast it. First of all, it's a little ugly, and second of all, it's just more work for us. So to show you specifically what I've done, and begin play here, we were going ahead and casting our uh, pawn owner to mutant character and then setting the reference. I've adjusted this to cast to mutant character BP and then set the reference based off of that. And then I, of course I've changed my mutant character or my mutant character reference to mutant character BP instead of just the mutant class. So because of that, everywhere where I had mutant character reference and a cast, I've been able to switch to just mutant character reference. A little heads up there. But I have my mutant character BP reference here, and then I just call modify hurt box. It's that simple. I pass it the data I want. Now, quite frankly, I don't really know the data that I want. I kind of just have to eyeball it and hope that it looks good. Because right now, I'm modifying a scale with this value. So this is 1.1 the normal scale and 0 0.8 the normal scale. And I have zero for the offset because I'm just shrinking it for crouching. So it's kind of hard to tell if that's going to look good or not. I just had to eyeball it. It takes some getting used to, so feel free to just play around with it. But this is how you call the function and set the variables. 
Now, resize the default hurt box. For this one, I have my mutant character reference and I'm calling reset hurt box. Remember, reset hurt box doesn't take in any parameters, it just resets the scale to one and uh, gets rid of the offset that we added, if any. Then I'm grabbing the capsule component from my mutant character reference to set the capsule half height to 80. Remember, 80 is the value I chose for the um, the capsule half height here at the start. It was, again, I think it was originally like 92, 96. Let's see what it says in code. It was originally 96. So I've made it 80. 80 is the default. You should probably save that somewhere or, you know, update it to just the scale or meters that you're aware of, feet that you're aware of, not just 80 units, but it's fine for now. Then off of my mutant character reference, this is a character BP, remember? But of course its parent is mutant character, which is a child of fighter template character, which is a child of Unreal's character, which means it can call the Unreal functions. So crouch and uncrouch. In this case, we want to call uncrouch. So the reason I'm now using these Unreal functions is because when we are doing operations to change the capsule collider size specifically the hurt box not so much but the capsule collider size specifically there's issues that can arise if we don't use unreal's functions or don't write a, a pretty pretty involved function to fix this issue so I'll, i'm, I'm going to show you a way we can do it in code and i'm going to show you a way we do it right here first things first in code i've tracked down the function itself in the character movement component Crouch, and then there's one for uncrouch. And you can see how involved these functions are. I'm not even going to try and cover all the logic in here. This is crazy big. But the important part for today's episode of what we're using here is the collision size. If we just update the collision of the capsule component, and that way the capsule component shrinks, it will shrink from the middle. That's how it works. Now, if this capsule component shrinks from the middle, you lose uh, data on your feet and on your character's head. Because of that, you're gonna go into your crouching animation and you're either gonna sink into the floor or you're gonna try and offset it and you're gonna appear above the floor and fall down. And both of those are really ugly, especially if crouching is something you're doing a lot of in your game. And since the character has the time to do it or they have the ability to do it all the time, then you want that to make sure that looks good. You want to make sure that looks good. Instead of trying to mimic all this logic and create it ourselves, let's just use what Unreal has. I think they know what they're doing by now. In our fighter template character CPP, so your base character, in our start crouching and stop crouching function, we want to do everything we're already doing. We don't need to change any of our logic. Our logic is still relevant, but we do want to go ahead and include their logic. I call crouch and uncrouch right here in code. Now, since I'm calling this right here in code, it's not necessary that we call uncrouch again when we're resetting the hurtbox data, such as right here. But because resize to default hurtbox is not, I'm leaving it open so we can use it wherever, like when we get knocked down and stand back up, then we won't always stop crouching at that point. We won't always call uncrouch here. So I'm calling it there. It's okay if it gets called twice in a row. There's also safety checks you can feel free to add to make sure it only gets called once, but it's not really hurting anything as is. So there you go. Just call crouch and uncrouch in your functions here. And then go ahead and call it off of your character reference in your anim BP when you want to resize the default the, the default hurt box. And lastly, uh, this is the resize the knockdown hurt box. So it's basically the same thing as the resize the crouch but I'll go over it again. We take our mutant character reference, we call modify hurt box. We pass it the values that are important to us, width, height, and then I put an offset of negative 20 so that it is also lower on the character. This is what essentially allows the uh, attacks to avoid hitting the character that's knocked down, hitting their hurt box, and having that character take damage. Set the capsule half height to two, <laughs> because it's very, very thin. And then I go ahead and call crouch on it. Sure, it, you know, the character is not crouching here, they're knocked down, but it doesn't really matter. We just need to be able to resize the, the, the capsule collider in a method that does not make it look jumpy or fall through the floor or anything like that. 
All right, and at that point, we're doing fairly well. The other thing we need to do, and this is very important, if we go to our character and character movement, there is something we need to set before we can use Unreal's crouching system. We need to go into our details here and search for crouch, and there'll be a nav movement, movement capabilities, can crouch. Make sure you check that. You can also set this in code, but I'm gonna set it right here because I find this to be the easiest way to get it. You have to do a bunch of casts to obtain it in code, and I feel like it doesn't really hurt anything if you just set it in the blueprint here. There's also the possibility that you don't want all characters to be able to crouch. There are characters that cannot crouch or where it doesn't really change their size. So there you go. The last thing we need to do is actually set up our camera to work a little bit better with this. I'm gonna set up a little system for you so that it's a little bit cleaner. And this is why my camera was sunken into the ground a bit. So um, the camera goes off of a bunch of different things, an X, Y, and Z uh, between the players and things like that. Now, what that means is when we are to change the height, you know, the location between our heights, then the camera moves. So if you crouch, it will actually move the camera down, which you don't want, but you still want it to move up when a character jumps. Because of this, what I've done is very simple. This is logic in our event tick of our default camera blueprint that we've already had. I have not changed anything else, but four nodes here, and this I've added a comment to. This was previously below. This is our X value, how, how close the camera is to the characters. I've just moved this up so that we have more space, but I've just added four nodes. I made two variables. I made a Boolean has set camera bounds and a bool or an, excuse me, a float camera height minimum. The camera height minimum is gonna be used to determine if the camera should be able to go lower than, the va than this specific value. If that's the minimum, there's no reason for us to be able to go lower than that. It'll stop the camera from doing some things like showing things we don't want. And since all my changes with the capsule collider size and the crouching caused us to see things we don't want, I do have some adjustments to make, but this will kind of make it so that it's not super ugly, not bouncing around all the time. I just have to adjust the, the location and maybe my stages around a little bit to just showcase it a little bit better. So easiest thing to do here is on event tech, we have a branch right away that makes sure the player one and player two references are valid. After that, I go ahead and drag our new Boolean onto the screen, has set camera bounds, and it's false by default. We haven't done anything with it, so it's going to be false. So use this as a branch. You know how to do branch by now. And then off of false, we want to set our camera height minimum to the thing that's getting set to the Z value. Remember, we're grabbing both actor locations, P1 and P2, breaking their vectors, grabbing the Z value, adding them together, divided by two to get the median, or excuse me, to get the average or the middle. And then we are dragging that value into Z. Well, we wanna use our camera height minimum and a clamp to make sure that our Z value never goes below the camera height minimum. So in false, go ahead and, and drag off of this and just set camera height minimum, which is our new float value. And then go ahead and set, has set camera bounds to true at this point. And then continue about your life. Now, if has set camera bounds is already true, we're just gonna skip that logic and it's essentially gonna be the exact same logic we already had in a prior episode. So these are the new things. And also this. So this Z value is going right into the make vector Z before setting the actor location of the camera. We wanna make sure that the camera's height or how high it is in the scene never goes below the minimum camera height. What we can do is grab our float, which you can just drag onto the screen, and then actually call something called clamp. Whoops, clamp. And clamp makes it to where you have to, this value has to fall within this certain range. So the minimum value is the camera height minimum. It will not go below that. The maximum, I just give it a huge value. It's definitely not necessary to be that big. In fact, you only probably have to make it about 2000 or so if you're using the default Unreal locations. But you may need to look at your location in the scene and see where some things are positioned. Like if your actor location is like 5 million, well then you need to adjust that. Okay, and that will fix the camera. I know there are some things, like I keep saying, it's a little bit too low, so I need to probably update the minimum height. 
but uh, it's good for now. It's good because at least we have a standardized way of doing it at this point. So there you go, guys. That's our. That's how to modify your hurt boxes to actually work with the with the animation or the state you're in. This will help you do things like knock your opponent down, have them not be able to get hit and take damage at this point, and then their hurt box resizes. Now you'll see a little bit of a jump sometimes because of the hurt box resize, and we'll smooth that out when we go over multiple hurt boxes. So don't stress over that. But now you have the capability to do this. If this helped you, please subscribe. It does more for the channel and for me than anything else you can do, and I just really appreciate it. it makes me know that I'm doing a good job and teaching you things that you guys want to learn and you guys want to see. I want to give a huge shout out to my YouTube membership and Patreon supporters. Thank you guys so much for continuing to support me in the series. Of course, I'm very, very excited about that and very glad that you guys are enjoying it. That's the most important thing. If you had any issues with this tutorial or any of the tutorials in my series, or any of my series even, then feel free to join the Discord. Be happy to help you out. It's free, and we have a nice loving community in there if you just want to talk about anything and hang out. The link is in the description. And then, lastly, guys, if you want to come support us on Twitch, you can uh, go follow us at twitch.tv slash seanlebro27. We play Dark Souls games on Wednesday, and we actually do programming streams on Friday. We've started doing programming streams on YouTube, so alternating Fridays, we do one programming stream on YouTube, one programming stream on Twitch, and we alternate every Friday. If you, if you want to check that out, you can click this icon to go to the Sean the Bro 27 YouTube channel, and you'll see all of the archive streams. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. I'm Sean the Bro, and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye, guys.